Hi, we're going to discuss sets of real numbers and the order of operations. Let's begin by looking at some objectives for this presentation. We're going to explore the common sets of numbers, use exponents, use the order of operations, and learn the properties of real numbers. So let's begin by looking at the common sets of numbers, and we're going to start out with the natural numbers. The natural numbers are the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. The next set of numbers that you see a lot of is the whole numbers. Notice that 0 is included as an element in this set. So it's the natural numbers plus the element 0. Now the integers are the whole numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, plus negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. We can visualize a set of integers by looking at a number line. Notice that the integers minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on are all indicated here on the number line. Note that minus 3 is to the left of minus 2. Suppose we have a set that contains only three numbers, minus 2, minus 1, and 2. We can locate the elements of this set on the number line. When one integer is divided by another integer, the divisor can't be 0. The result is called a rational number. So we have this definition of rational numbers. It's the set of p all over q, such that p and q are integers, and q is not equal to 0. For instance, 4 thirds would be a rational number. 3, written as 3 all over 1, would be a rational number. And many of the fractions that we think of are all rational numbers. Uh, I mentioned 4 thirds, uh, 1 third, and so on. Now we're going to explore how to locate these rational numbers on a number line. So let's look at the number line again. And let's look at the number minus 7 fifths. If we write that as minus 1 and 2 fifths, we can locate it and approximate it on the number line. Let's look at a minus 1 fourth. It would be located right about there. And 4 thirds, we can write as 1 and 1 third. Now, let's look at the set of real numbers. And the set, of, the set of real numbers is the set of all numbers that correspond to points on the number line. So if we look at the number line again, the entire number line is shaded. One thing you might notice about the real numbers is all the natural numbers are included in this set. All the whole numbers, all the integers, and the rational numbers. Now you might ask, are there any numbers that are not rational, but are real. And it turns out there are. So these are numbers that cannot be written in the form p all over q. These are called irrational numbers. This is a real number that is not rational. So let's talk about some examples of these. We think of the square root of 2. Now notice the approximation symbol that we have here. That's equal to 1.4, it's approximately equal to 1.41421. E, which is approximately equal to 2.71828, pi, which you're probably familiar with, and here's another one, square root of 19. These are all irrational numbers. One thing to notice about these irrational numbers is in their decimal representation. Their decimal representations do not repeat or terminate. So let's explore this idea a little bit closer. If we look at rational numbers, say, for example, 3 eighths, right, we get 0.375. Notice that that is a terminating decimal. If we look at 1 third, that is 0.33 and so on. The, the bar across the 3 there indicates that it repeats. So that's what we call a repeating decimal. These are still all rational numbers. And 2 ninths would be 0.2 with a bar over the 2. So there are patterns in these last two, one-third and two-ninths. Now, if we look at irrational numbers, 
like the square root of 7, we can see in its decimal representation that there is no pattern, nor does it terminate. And pi and the square root of 29, those are all irrational numbers. So the set of real numbers consists of the elements of the rational and irrational numbers. Okay, let's look at an example of this. Suppose we have the set A, and what I want you to do now is list the elements of A that belong to the various sets of numbers that we already discussed. So stop the tape and look at the, and answer the question. Okay, let's start listing some of the uh, elements of this set in the various sets. All the elements of A are real except minus 2 divided by 0. That is undefined. So that is not a real number. The irrational number is the square root of 13. The rational numbers are minus 5, 0, 3 halves, and 7. The integers are minus 5, 0, and 7. The whole numbers are 0 and 7. And finally, you have the natural number, which is 7. Now we're going to go on into exponential notation. And we're going to start off by looking at an example. Uh, exponential notation is used to write the product of repeated factors. And for example, if you write 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, we can write that as 5 to the fourth power. Keep in mind, if we look at the definition of exponential notation, that if n is any positive integer and a is any real number, then a to the n is equal to the product of a, where a appears n times. A couple of terms to keep in mind when you're working with exponential notation. Here we have the expression a to the n. n is called the exponent, and a is called the base. So let's go to an example of this. Suppose you're asked to evaluate these exponential expressions. Now I'm going to let you work on these, and then we'll look at your work. OK, let's look at the first problem. We have the opposite of 3 to the fifth. So that would equal the opposite of, and then the quantity 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is equal to the opposite of 243. So notice the base on this problem is 3. If we look at the next problem, part b, we notice the base here is negative 3. So we have negative 3 written 4 times, the product of negative 3, 4 times, and that's equal to 81. OK, now we're going to go on to some guidelines about performing these operations on real numbers. This is called the order of operations. If grouping symbols such as parentheses, square brackets, or fraction bars are present, what you want to do is work se separately above and below each fraction bar. Use the rules which follow within each grouping symbol. Start with the innermost and work outward. Simplify all powers and roots working from left to right. Do any multiplication or divisions in the order in which they occur, working from left to right. Do any negations, additions, or subtractions in the order in which they occur, working from left to right. So we're going to look at some examples here of this. So let's start off with this problem. First, you notice you have 7 squared there, and you want to perform that operation first. So we would get 49 minus 15 divided by 3. Then we perform the division. So we get 49 minus 5. And then the subtraction, which gives us 44. Now let's look at another example. 